Hello and welcome. You're listening to the Evolvepreneur Secret Show for Entrepreneurs, and I'm your host, Brian Silverthorne. And it's my mission to help entrepreneurs make a difference and to also navigate the often challenging worlds of startup and growth or relaunch. And today we're going to dig deep with our guest to get you some great concepts and strategies to help fast track your business. And our special guest today is Melanie Hershorn. And Melanie is a book marketing strategist for coaches, consultants, and speakers. Welcome to the show, Melanie. Thank you, Brian. I'm so happy to be here. Happy to have you. So where are you hanging out today? Phoenix, Arizona, where Ooh, I am. Yes, okay. where the weather is sunny and beautiful. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Actually, we have a relative coming in for a couple of nights on business from uh, Prescott Valley. So up the road yeah. a piece from you, but mm -hmm. still in the same same general area. Yeah. So uh, what what inspired you to, to get into this particular business? I've had a varied career uh, in my 43 years of being alive. And uh, I started out in PR, moved to journalism, and then I was laid off when I was pregnant. And I thought, what can I do now? I'm going to design and manufacture breastfeeding clothing. And so that's kind of when my entrepreneurial um, excitement took off. And uh, after about seven years doing that, I decided to close the business and really help entrepreneurs with their marketing and specifically authors, because I find that when a person writes a book, they put their heart and soul into it. And one of the greatest tragedies is if it just sits on the shelf collecting dust and they don't get it out to the world. So I'm on a mission to make sure that that doesn't happen. Oh, well, so what, what in that's quite a transition. So when, when you did make, and there's, we've all gone through various transitions. So I get that. Um, but uh, when you got to be focused on authors, what are you an author or did it get you there? Did, did you know some that, that needed help or how did you settle there? So I, I am an author, but it wasn't, you know, I went through it and then I had to help other people. It wasn't like that. It was authors started coming to me. I was getting phone calls. You do marketing and I just wrote a book. Do you think you could help me? <laughs> and which, you know, it's kind of when the universe keeps sort of knocking you upside the head and then finally you go, okay, okay, I'm listening. <laughs> <laughs> that was more of, of how it, how it happened, but it's been a, a wonderful journey for me because a book is so tangible and then I get to take that book and show people how to leverage it to grow their business and their brand and to create that awareness and to really help others, which is essentially why you write the book in the first place. It's not just so you can say I wrote a book. There's a there's a reason behind it. And so I show people how to leverage that. Well, good, good. So when you got started in this particular business, what were the biggest challenges you faced? Mindset issues would be the biggest challenge because all of a sudden I was relying on my brain as strategy. It wasn't like a product that I could hold up and say, here, this is how it works. So um, I would say mindset in terms of, you know, do I have something of value to offer and can I make money doing this? And, and the answer to both of those questions is yes. <laughs> <laughs> That, that's good. And that's that I hear that answer quite a bit in various forms. It's it's uh, um, getting in the right frame of mind to to believe that you can do it and move forward the way you'd like to do it. It's true. When I first started out as an entrepreneur and I was going to different events for entrepreneurs, uh, I remember meeting a woman who said, well, some people help with the business. Some people help with the emotional. I help with the spiritual aspect of the entrepreneur. And I, at that time, found that to be comical. I thought she was kidding. Uh, I didn't understand that there really is a, a a reason for that. And so now that I've kind of gone in that direction, I, I understand and I get it. If your mindset, you can have all the strategy in the world, but if your mindset isn't, isn't right, you're not going to get anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with that. So uh, do you have any particular visions for your business, say over the next three years and a plan for making those real? Well, I believe that my plan is already in place. Uh, my word of this past year has been momentum um, because I have really 
sort of laid down the foundation. So in the next three years, I want to be able to help thousands of nonfiction and children's book authors, because we know that there are millions of books published every year. So if I can at least help thousands, that is going to really that that's where I see it is, is helping that many people to inspiring them to say, you know what, I wrote this book, let me do something amazing with it. So what do you say you have a plan in place? Of what are you doing to, uh, I guess, attract those a thousand authors or budding authors to to seek out your help? Well, I do the things that I teach. So social media marketing, email marketing, speaking on stages, speaking on podcasts. How meta is that? So, you know, really getting getting the word out about what I offer so that I can help people get the word out about what they offer. Okay. Makes perfect sense. Um, so what does your ideal client, I know your author is the is the um, the overall category, but is there an ideal client that that works better than another or fits better than another with what you have to offer? Absolutely. As you know, not all authors are the same. And so it has to be somebody who's written their book with a particular mission in mind. And their desire is not to say, well, I just want to make money. It's, it's really more about leveraging that, that book to further their mission for their business or their brand. So whether it's a client, like a client of mine, um, Mike, who's a financial planner, whose mission is to help teach financial planners client retention. Um, so that that's a noble mission, right? Or, or another client of mine who is a children's book author who wants to um, create better communication between parents and children. I mean, those two things are not you would never really say those in the same sentence, right? But they really are linked in that the goal is a noble one, a, a mission to improve this world in some way. So the people who write a book, you know, with intent to further their brand or their business, but with that goal of making this world a better place, those are my people. Good. I, I like that phrase, noble mission. I don't know if I've heard it quite that way before, but uh, that, that's uh, I'm going to pop that down in my collection of cool phrases. So awesome. I like that one. Yeah. <laughs> um, so any particular roadblocks uh, that uh, you run up against periodically to in your business as it, as it relates to attracting new people and helping them out and getting them off on the right path? Absolutely. Of course, there are roadblocks. Let's let's see. So some roadblocks are, you know, people say, well, if I'm paying you for strategy, just can't you just do it for me? Can't you just do everything for me? And to which I say, well, no, because first of all, you won't learn how to do it. And second of all, anyone who says they can do everything for you is probably selling you, you know, a, a bill of goods that is not actually what you want. Um, there are giant marketing companies that will offer you the moon and then deliver not very much. So that's one thing. People don't necessarily realize the importance of strategy versus the, you know, posting on Instagram every day implementation. But there's definitely they're different. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and 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 you anybody can post on Instagram, but not anybody can provide you with a visionary strategy. Another one is that people think that being a best-selling author is all you need to do. And that's it. And unfortunately, that's not all you need to do. And if you are a best-selling author, that's wonderful. But that's just, that's not going to sell more books or fill programs. That's just another, you know, feather in your cap, so to speak. So learning how to leverage the best-selling author piece of that that is something that I kind of have to, I guess, crumble the roadblock in my way. Okay. So it's uh, your mindset was something you had to deal with when you got started and it's other people's mindset. It sounds like that you have to deal with to make sure, first of all, they're a good fit. And secondly, that you can help them in the right way and they're exactly. willing to participate. Exactly. I mean, there are a lot of, there's a lot of information out there and not all of it is accurate. What do you mean? You mean if it's 
not on if any if i thought everything on the internet or anywhere was accurate right right i mean my eight-year-old he'll say well i watched it on youtube so that means it's right no no <laughs> it just means it's on youtube that's exactly it <laughs> Well, this, I, you've got a, this is an interesting uh, uh, profession that you have here, and I'm sure it's, it's needed because there's lots of people out there that can, I'm, I'm sure that some that can sit down and write and some that think they can sit down and write, but, but once you have the product, whether it's a book or um, a pair of shoes, you still have to, to get the word out there and have a strategy for doing it. So we're getting kind of toward the end of our time. Do you have any final thoughts for the people that uh, would be would benefit from your skills and when what you offer or just and for entrepreneurs in general well i would love to invite all entrepreneurs to write a book because that is a an important credibility piece and that really does solidify you as a subject matter expert but if nobody knows that you wrote the book that's not really going to help you. So once you do write that book, I would recommend marketing it as much as you can, because even though you're an author, you also need to be a marketer. Okay. So the, 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 uh, the nugget for thought there is, is, uh, people have to know what you've done, uh, before they can take advantage of it. But I think it's it's akin to what a buddy of mine does that design one of the things he does is design websites and he mm -hmm. said a website's great but unless people know about it it's like a big billboard in the middle of the desert it, it's just there exactly. <laughs> that, that nobody sees exactly and so what i would say is brian you wouldn't you wouldn't you know plan a party and then forget to send out the invitations yeah excellent good analogy Good. Okay. Well, I'm going to use that as a wrap on another great guest episode of the Evolvepreneur Secret Show for Entrepreneurs. And just before you go, if you liked it, please give us a five-star review and share it with a couple of friends. And if you want to make sure you uh, don't miss any future episodes or catch up on some past ones, go to evolvepreneursecrets.show. And if you're an entrepreneur and you got a great idea up there in your noggin, let's get it out there today. Thanks for listening.